I'd like to teach you a word tonight if you don't already know it. Eschatology. Can you say eschatology? It's a Greek word. And it means the study of the end times. Now, we get a good dose of eschatology in 2 Peter today. He tells us that in the end times, everything is going to be destroyed. Everything's going to be burnt up. Everything that's familiar to us, this building, trees, mountains, stars, everything is going to be dissolved. Wow. Imagine that. And this was such a new idea to the people he's talking up to. You see, what the people of the world believed at the time of the apostles was this, a pagan idea of eternal return. Everything was cyclical like the seasons. Everything just went round and around and around. And there really was no end time because matter and everything you see is eternal. It always was, it is now, and it always will be. And here comes the apostles saying, that's not the way it is. In a real way, time is linear, and it's going to come to an end, and that there is a God at the end to meet you. You see, if you believe in the cyclical worldview, it really doesn't matter what you do with your lives, right? Because there's no accounting at the end of it all. But the apostle's saying, oh yes. It matters what you do with your life because there's an accounting at the end. Therefore, in light of this, what type of persons ought we be? And that's the question for us tonight. What sort of people ought we be? To be. Now, we moderns, since the Enlightenment, want to throw this burden of eschatology off our backs because we don't want to believe that there's going to be an end times, and we don't want to believe there's going to be an accounting, and we don't want to believe that there's Jesus, the Lord, at the end who's going to, to evaluate us. We don't like that because we've made ourselves God. So, you know, quite a few people over the last few hundred years have tried to go back to the pagan idea. You know, I have a friend who a few years back, a number of years back, he was very intelligent, he's older than me, and he was helping us in the seminary in the mentoring process, very educated and and what have you. And um, uh, he basically told me that uh, that he was like a neo-pagan. He, he didn't believe that there was a God outside of time to whom we have to be accountable to. And that he was living in this cyclical thing. You know, and that's basically where New Age people are today. You know that? I mean, most, many people are trying to get back to that old pagan ideal. I, I asked him a simple question. I said, Richard, How can you believe this in the face of what happened in 1945 when we opened up the genie of nuclear destruction? How can you say there's an eternal return, that everything's going to be the same all the time? And he looked at me sadly and says, you know, I can't answer that question. Can't answer it. Wow. You know... Our culture lives in terror. Listen to the news. Fear has gripped this world. Broadcasters, politicians, 
It's incredible what's going on in our culture right now. And you know, it's not far beyond our imaginations, any of our imaginations, that what Scripture said, it could be all over. We can destroy ourselves. And you'd think that now that we see what Peter is saying here is a real possibility, you would think that how would we answer that question? What sort of people ought we to be, right? You'd think that people would repent, wouldn't you think? I mean, the end could happen soon. Peter says that, you know, a thousand years is like a year to the God. Okay? Mm-hmm, okay. Can we imagine another thousand years of this? Can we even imagine another 20 years of this, right? So what kind of people are we to be? It's amazing that, that fear has gripped everybody. You know something? Fear is behind a lot of the sins that we're going on now today. We're, we're not turning to God. What we're doing is saying, let's eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. We want to grasp everything we can because we don't know if there's going to be a tomorrow. Well, that's, that's really counterintuitive, isn't it? <laughs> well, there's an end, I guess, we believe in the culture, but God's not at the end of it. There's just nothing but blank. So, what kind of persons ought we to be in light of the revelation that God has given us? What kind of people should we do? We should be holy. And we should be full of hope. Now, hope is not wishful thinking. That's how most people consider hope. How many people have hopes that there's a lot of wishful thinking going on right now? You know, maybe what you might get for Christmas. Or, man, you know, um, I hope I'll get a good return in taxes, you know. Um, You know? (laughs) We have all this wishful thinking going on, you know, and I think the world scoffs at Christianity because they think our hope is merely wishful thinking, that at the end there is salvation, but that's not, that's not, that's not hope, wishful thinking. You've got to throw that out the window. That's, that's not, that's not Christian hope. Christian hope is the power to exist in the future through faith, guided by a divinely guided imagination, where we know that we know that Jesus is going to come back. And when he comes back, all this stuff in the world is going to just dissolve. And out of the old... A whole new is going to be rebirthed. And we know that we know this through faith. It's a power that God's given us. One of the powers of the soul is to be able to actually live in the future before you're there. In Christian knowledge, hope is knowledge. And that's what ought we be. Full of hope, full of joy of the Holy Spirit, full of knowledge of the future, living there before we're even there. That's what we ought to be. That's what God's asking us to be. My friends, if we are holding on to things of this world as if they are everything, We're holding on to that which is going to be destroyed and crumble away. What a waste. But if we're holding on to the Lord Jesus now, in the depths of our soul, we're not afraid. Matter of fact, what does Peter say? He says, we're we're supposed to long for that time when this all disappears. We can have that hope. What sort of person are you today? Are you living in fear? Are you scared? That's not where God wants you to be. 
He's asking you to live in joy, certain hope of the gospel promises.